This mid-race update is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. The Zero Sugar and refreshingly delicious is Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. The best Coke ever? Try it today. Four lead changes among three different drivers to this point in race number one. Ryan Blaney's led the most laps to this point, a total of 30. Joey Logano about to lead his 18th lap of this race and Ross Chastain led a single lap early on. No caution flags to this point in the race. This dual race number one was caution free the last two years. And with 11 laps to go, Jeff, we remain caution free in dual race number one. Clean and green since we dropped the green flag as you pointed out now. 49 laps to go. By the way, that voice belonged to Alex Hayden. My name is Jeff Striegel. We're joined topside by NASCAR Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace in the turns all week now. This is your broadcast team all the way through the end of the Daytona 500. Dave Moody in two. Mike Bagley at the end of the Daytona Super Stretch. Kyle Rickey is over in turn four up and down pit road this weekend. Steve Post, Dylan Welch, and Kim Kuhn. Since we have not had a caution flag, no one to this point has received a free pass. Free passes are presented by Mahindra. Race fans, don't forget to cheer for Chase Briscoe in the Mahindra Tractors number 14 car and race into your local dealer for big savings on Mahindra, the official tractor of Tough. 2015 Daytona 500 winner Joey Logano is the man out front right behind Kevin Harvick. He too has a Daytona 500 win. And Ryan Blaine Kyle Ricky, a driver that everybody expects to run up front on Sunday afternoon. Always does at these super speedway races. Has come cl so close a few times here at Daytona. Right now running in the third spot as they make their way back to the front straightaway. Nine laps to go here in Blue Green Vacations. Duel number one. Logano has the shell. Pins oil Ford at the front of the field. Tucked right up underneath his back bumper is Kevin Harvick. Just waiting his turn, biding his time is Kevin Harvick. If you're wondering if the Chevy contingent is making any ground in that second gra uh, draft? Absolutely not. No appreciable change as that Ford group with a couple of Toyotas thrown in. They are almost the full length of the super stretch ahead of the Chevy. Matter of fact, here comes the Chevy contingent out of two. The back stretch now. Logano and company pass me at the entrance of three as we speak. Yeah, nearly the length of the back straightaway as through turn three and four right now go the Fords and Toyotas led by Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, Chris Buchery, Christopher Bell. Eight to go, single file, nose to tail. Rusty, I think this race ends the way that we see it right now, but you disagree. Well, I think they're racing out there right now, and I did, typically we do, at Teledega and Daytona, we see this happening, single file racing, kind of deep into the run sometimes, but tonight... I mean, I keep talking about these points that are available, and to me, that's a big deal. I really think somebody's going to jump out of the line and try to pick up some positions. I just don't think they're just going to sit there. Hey, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I think they're going to swap it up a little bit and try to get some more points. What about you, Alex? Is uh, Nose to tail, they know they're in. They really, right now, know their starting position the way they run. Mix it up or stay where they are. We learned two weeks ago in the Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum, Martin Truex Jr., who won that race, did not win at all last year. He said winning at anything, points paying or not, is important at this level. And to be able to get a win means a ton of momentum. So, yeah, I think somebody's going to try to want to win this race. Not to mention the fact it's Daytona. This is the world center of racing. How many times are you going to have an opportunity to put your car in Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane at the world center of racing? Now, that all being said... This new Gen 6 race car, I say new, it's only in its second year debuting here after last year. We know on super speedways this car has a high drag coefficient, meaning that the car doesn't slip through the air quite as well. And talking to a lot of drivers and crew chiefs, you're going to need help. If you pull out a line by yourself, it's not going to work. You're going to have to have somebody go with you. So Rusty at the front of the field right now, as they come by the start-finish line, there's only nine cars in that lead draft. And that's the key thing right there. There's nine cars, and there's ten points up there available. They can do that. Now look all the way back to Byron, who's leading the Chevrolet Brigade. He's in tenth position all the way way, uh, uh, way back from the Fords. They can just stay single file, no harm, no file, finish the race. That's good. So I can understand them not even trying to do anything. But the front pack, those nine cars, those Fords, I 
still think someone will shake it up. All right, well, let's find out. We are down to five to go. The nine cars include seven Ford Mustangs and two Toyotas. Will they start to work together, or are they content to finish as they run across the line? It's Logano, Harvick, Blaney, Busher, Christopher Bell. That is your top five, and they are headed to one. Kevin Harvick in the runner-up position, tucked right up under the rear spoiler of Joey Logano, Shell, Pennzoil, Ford, but he makes no moves whatsoever. Everybody single file. The conga line heads for turn two. Everybody in the lead draft very disciplined right now as they exit two and race the way up the super stretch. Wow. At the same time, in the Chevrolet pack at the other end of the back straightaway, they're starting to race it up, jostle for positions. So Austin Dillon and also Jimmy Johnson step out of line and make progress when they did. Also Ty Dillon stepping out of line a lap ago, side by side with brother Austin. That second pack led by William Byron. They're in turn number four now as the leaders are already back to start finish. Something to think about. Nine cars in that lead draft. Seven of them are Ford Mustangs. Two of them are Toyotas. Dave, I think the Toyotas may be the ones to do it. The worst they're going to finish if they get kicked out of line is ninth. Not a lot to lose. They're at least going to get a stage point or two no matter how it works out. Bubba Wallace right now four cars from the back of the pack trying to close the gap. And Bubba lost a car length or two, perhaps maybe laying back and trying some maneuvering to see if he can get some momentum in that McDonald's Toyota Camry. Right now Bubba is fourth from the back in this lead pack. And just behind him, Michael McDowell, also Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and perhaps the one driver that hopes the final few laps remain calm. Zane Smith, the highest finished, uh, highest running opening car right now, running in ninth. Three to go as they make their way back to the stripe. 191 miles an hour. A seven car freight train. Joey Logano at the front of the field. And Logano unchallenged here uh, for, since the very early laps of this event. We'll see if Kevin Harvick is going to make a move. So far, there is nothing there. Harvick right there in second. Ryan Blaney in third as they work off turn Two. Blue Ovals come to the back straightaway, led by Logano. Harvick is with him in lockstep, not varying his line at all. Ryan Blaney third, Chris Busher fourth, and the first Toyota at the front, Christopher Bell in fifth. And then it's a bit of a gap. A couple car lengths back to Harrison Burton, then a few more car lengths back to Bubba Wallace as the back four of the top nine beginning to lose ground. Two laps to go. The highest running open car trying to race into the Daytona 500 is in the lead draft, albeit it, the last car in that lead draft. That is Zane Smith, and he's in a prime spot to get a spot in the great American race. He's the last guy in the world that's going to be making a move in the final couple of laps because he is happy to be right where he is. Here comes Bubba Wallace. He's going to jump to the outside. Michael McDowell will go with him. They drive around. Harrison Burton move Wallace to P6. Harrison Burton getting the shuffle backward out of two. Wallace will slide across his nose, but out to dry on the outside. Michael McDowell and Zane Smith as they will fall to the back of the Pack. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. now moves to the ninth car in this first pack of traffic as the top six cars remain single file. Bottom of the racetrack led by Joey Logano. Duel number one, one lap to go. The white flag is in the air here at the Daytona International Speedway and it's on. Joey Logano on the inside. Harvick is going to step out. Crossover now by Ryan Blaney. Blaney goes to the bottom of the racetrack. He will challenge down low. That's the battle for second place. Up high it's Harvick. He's got the drafting help. Harvick around the outside. Logano slides up the banking. He'll throw the block at the exit of two. And here come the Toyotas. Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, three wide up the gun. Wallace doesn't go with Bell. Bell will dive to the inside of Harvick for second. As Logano gets away with the lead, here comes Bell with a run from second. Bell up to second. Harvick kicked to the outside lane, falling outside of the top five. Here's Bell now to the outside of race leader Joey Logano. They are side by side on turn four. Christopher Bell has no drafting help. Now they'll stop. Back up on his back bumper, side by side to the line, checkered flag in the air, and it's going to be won by half a car length by Joey Logano. Joey Logano wins Blue Green Vacations dual race number one. Christopher Bell gave it a heck of a run on the outside lane. He'll finish second. Ryan Blaney will be third. Chris Busher will be fourth. Michael McDowell rounds out the top five. Jeff Striegel, who got into the Daytona 500? Well, Zane Smith, the 23-year-old driver from Huntington Beach, California, has made the great American race. Zane Smith will be racing on Sunday. Jimmy Johnson will join him. So the two open cars that will advance Jimmy on speed, Zane Smith races his way into the Daytona 500.
Now let's go down to Ruoff Mortgage, Victory Lane, and Steve Post. Down here in Victory Lane, Joey Logano has just brought the Shell Pennzoil Ford Mustang is. He is on the side of the car, and he's going up to stand on the door of the car. Steering wheel in one hand, Coca-Cola in the other hand, the crew members behind him as they are celebrating a win here at Daytona. Big smile on Joey's face. Last year, he was going for the win in one of these races, and it didn't turn out quite this good. This year, going for the win, a lot of mixing it up at the end, and you made it to victory lane. Congratulations. Kind of describe the way that one unfolded for you, Joey. Yeah, yeah a little smarter from what I did last year. A lot of lessons <laughs> learned, but, uh, you know, a total team effort. I set it out there on, on uh, the start-finish line. It takes a total team effort to, to win here on these super speedways. you got to execute the strategy correctly, execute everything uh, on the racetrack. Coleman did an amazing job up there. Painting a picture of what was going on behind me, getting ready for the intense moment that was going to happen on the last lap. You know it was going to happen. Uh, it was just kind of staying calm, making the right blocks at the right time, not making the right blocks at the right time, and uh, positioning ourselves to where uh, I was going to be in the, in the front there at the end. So um, Blaney helped me a lot there uh, at the end. Um, sticking with the, his, his Ford friend instead of uh, pushing that Toyota, so worked out really well. What did you learn about your race car, and how do you feel about it now as we inch closer to the Daytona 500? Well, it's fast. <laughs> we, we figure that out. It's fast. There's, there's always work to do. It's never perfect, but not a bad race car, and we'll have something for the 500, obviously. You won the exhibition race at the L.A. Coliseum last year. This is not a big – there's some points here and everything. Points. Winning is winning. How big is it to win here again at Daytona, Joey? Yeah, anytime you can win at Daytona. This is this is like the coolest victory lane to pull into, right? Daytona, it doesn't matter what race it is, if it's a duel, if it's a tricycle race on the front straightaway. It doesn't matter. Daytona is where you want to win. It's special every time. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's definitely been more special Sunday. So it's a good start for sure. Congratulations. Thank you. There we go. Joey Logano and the Team Penske team is down here in Ruff Mortgage Victory Lane at Daytona International Speedway. Congratulations to Joey Logano down in Ruff Mortgage Victory Lane.